Item number SCP-1522 Object Class Neutralize Special Containment Procedures SCP-1522-1 and 2 were tracked and monitored by Mobile Task Force Pi-2, aka Boulder's Pyre. MTF Pi-2 vehicles consisted of two Hamilton class cutters and one national security cutter, the SCPS Minos, with associated aircraft. Civilian maritime traffic was directed away from the expected course of SCP-1522-1 and 2. When this was not possible, MTF Pi-2 ships were to fire flares in order to attract and lead SCP-1522-1 and 2 into isolated ocean areas. Description SCP-1522 refers to two fishing trawlers. SCP-1522-1 and 2, each 39 meters in length. SCP-1522-1 and 2 were capable of speeds surpassing that of their specifications. Prior to Incident 1522 Row, their highest observed speed was 120 knots. Controls on SCP-1522-1 and 2's bridges were capable of autonomous movement, but were immovable by Foundation personnel. SCP-1522-1 and 2 were assumed to be sapient, and usually responded to SCP as vessel signals to change course. Records indicate SCP-1522-1 and 2 were manufactured simultaneously in 1991 at the Parkour Marine Shipyard in Whitby, United Kingdom. After construction, SCP-1522-1 and 2 were kept in Whitby Harbor for several months due to financial complications before being sold to separate buyers. They served with their respective companies for three years before being decommissioned as a result of recurrent mechanical issues. No anomalous effects were present during this time. It is unclear whether SCP-1522-1 or 2 actually underwent a decommissioning process. In May 1997, SCP-1522-1 and 2 were detected in a refurbished and repainted condition off the southern coast of Alaska. Foundation VBSS operations found no crew aboard either ship. SCP-1522-1 and 2 were tracking a grey whale mother and calf, using modified active sonar pings to mimic cetacean calls. SCP-1522-1 and 2 spent the majority of their time finding and engaging in plane-like activity with various whale species. The hulls of SCP-1522-1 and 2 regularly came into contact for prolonged periods while observing the animals. During a seven-month period spent in the Arctic, presumably searching for the bowhead whale, SCP-1522-2 collided with an iceberg. Part of the iceberg penetrated SCP-1522-2's outer hull and it was unable to free itself. SCP-1522-1 spent several weeks towing SCP-1522-2 and the iceberg into warmer waters until the iceberg has melted. SCP-1522-2 remained afloat, but was not subsequently observed moving faster than 10 knots. Addendum 1522-1 Event Log of Incident 1522 Row Taking place 60 kilometers northwest of Ullerpoof, Scotland, in mid-2011. Forward, the following log is a composite account of eyewitness reports and video feeds taken from members of MTF Pi-2. SCP-1522-1 and 2 were following a part of Minky Wales. Begin log, 11.51. SCP-1522-1 curves around the bow of SCP-1522-2 before briefly accelerating to 80 knots, creating a large wave which splashes several minky whales and causes SCP-1522-2 to rock slightly. 1154 
SCP-1522-2 comes up to the port side of SCP-1522-1 and sounds its foghorn. They turn together in a southwesterly direction. 1218. Both SCP-1522-1 and 2 come to a complete stop. No activity is registered from either ship for a period of 17 seconds. SCP-1522-1 then focuses its weather surveillance radar on SCP-1522-2 and sounds its foghorn three times in slow succession. 1219. SCP-S-Minos detects an RGM-84 harpoon inbound on a bearing of 340. Vector indicates SCP-1522-2 as target. 1220. SCP-1522-2 sounds its falcon four times and begins moving at eight knots to touch its hull with that of SCP-1522-1. SCP-1522-1 and 2 collide gently. SCP Asminos detects a second RGM-84 harpoon on a bearing of 340. 1222. SCP-1522-1 moves and turns to a bearing of 340. SCP-1522-1 then accelerates to Mark 4, resulting in large plumes of steam and the creation of a bow wave of approximately 60 meters in height. SCP-1522-1 vanishes over the horizon in 23 seconds. 1223. Harpoon missiles hit SCP-1522-2 starboard side. SCP-1522-2's hull is ruptured and begins to sink. All lights on SCP-1522-2 go out. 1226. SCP-1522-1 seemingly turning from the direction it previously left. SCP-1522-1's falcon is continually blurring. SCP-1522-1 tries to prevent SCP-1522-2 from taking on water by moving to SCP-1522 starboard side. 1228. As SCP-1522-2 comes completely submerged, Numerous active sonar pings are detected, originating from SCP-1522-1. SCP-1522-1 begins a series of complex high-speed movements, resulting subsurface wave patterns create multiple zones of high pressure below SCP-1522-2, an apparent effort by SCP-1522-1 to cause SCP-1522-2 to resurface. 1230. SCP-1522-2 is no longer visible from the surface. SCP-1522-1 ceases all activity. 1600. An MH-65C Dolphin helicopter is launched from SCP-S Minos and approaches SCP-1522-1 for monitoring. No change in activity is reported. 1936. SCP-1522-1 lets out a sustained call from its foghorn. SCP-S Minos sonar detects large rectangular masses detaching from SCP-1522-1. It are found to be part of SCP-1522-1's hull. SCP-1522-1 is only submerged within 10 minutes. Closing Statement SCP-1522-1 and 2 were to be based in breach in preparation to be taken for salvage at, at Site-6 Zellberg. Weather conditions caused salvage operations to be delayed for several months, resulting in decayed conditions seen above. The remains of a GOC ship of the indeterminate class were discovered at 59 degrees 30 north, 6 degrees 09 west. No lifeboats were found. Addendum 1522-2 During the recovery and investigation of the vessels, two small partially formed apparently non-anonymous rowing boats were recovered from within the hull of SCP-1522-2. 
These vessels were extracted from SCP-1522-2 and are currently stored in situ at Site-6 Zwellberg. Addendum 1522-3 Following the breaching of SCP-1522-1 and 2, an unclear humanoid figure was spotted near the wrecks. However, no such figure was detained. The note below was found on the bridges of SCP-1522-1 and 2. They were happy before the end. Not all ships have to pass in the night. Pangloss Before there was anything, there was a great nothingness, and in this nothingness, there was neither light, nor darkness, nor time. And this nothingness was so great as to draw on itself, to create and fill itself. And out of the nothing, there came a beginning and an end. And the beginning was called flame, and it was the beginning of all light. And the end was called vision, and it was the end of all light. And all that was not light, was darkness. And so that it might burn the brighter. The flame made a heart, and from the heart of the flame, and from the heart of the flame came words, and the first words were, the story begins, and time, and so there was time, and the second words were, the story begins with a place, and so there were stars in the heavens, and the heavens were wrapped around the world, and in and on in between the worlds, there were scattered many places, and the third words were, the story begins with a spirit. And so there were spirits, and some spirits lived without form, and others lived in greater forms, and others lived in lesser forms, and man was among those that lived in lesser form. And the vision saw all this. Man at this time was thirty-seven in number, and to the youngest of man came the vision. The vision gave him knowledge, the knowledge gave him power, and the power gave him madness. And the youngest of man named himself beast of the heavens, and made himself king over man. This troubled the flame, for it knew that, in his madness, beast of the heavens would break the spirit of man. And so the flame cast beast of the heavens apart from man, so that he might not break the spirit. This troubled the flame, for it did not wish to do harm, and did it only out of necessity to keep man from harm. And the flame named itself Pangloss, for the first sorrow felt by its heart. And Pangloss walked among the worlds, and among man, and among the other spirits, and he stopped harm where he could, and wherever Pangloss walked, he left words.